and that's that. <laughs> man jordan peterson is the truth nothing but truth bombs sprinkled all throughout the debate no emotion just complete logic eloquent presentation calm composed this man is the real deal how much responsibility do you feel that you have particularly guys the alt right who as you say some of them have enjoyed your work and say no, i'm not one haven't. of i'm not one of you guys i'm not with you guys they haven't enjoyed my work <laughs> i've definitely read bits on the internet read more work. do you think a trans woman <laughs> is a real woman I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. No. <laughs> Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. Man, I'm woman. interested in... Simple. People being able to have different choices and, um, and having equality of outcome. Aha. Well, so the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that just out of curiosity? I what about bricklayers? They're 99% male. And, the f and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities mm -hmm. in the humanities <laughs> and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simplistic analysis. Why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm, not, I'm against the use of, of le legislation to determine what words are that myself and other people are required to utter. But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Nope. Well, <laughs> perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, they're artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose <laughs> viewpoint I do not share. Until women got full legal rights, oh, they could own property for themselves, they could work. Essentially they were owned, they were you're first owned their lowers, by their fathers and then by their husbands. Status to the domination by men. Yeah. You already said that you thought that what emancipated women primarily in the 20th century was technological revolution. No, not okay, primarily, so but that's it? one of two. I think that's it's two not things. not primarily, eh? No, you don't I think the pill was a primary force in the emancipation of women. I think or the invention of, or, of tampons, let's say, or the, or the provision of proper sanitary uh, facilities, uh, toilets and that sort of thing. You're, you're, you're thinking instead it was the action of courageous feminists in the 1920s that produced a social revolution that overthrew the patriarchy. That's your theory. Yeah, I That's think... That's a foolish theory. <laughs> That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. Compel! Compel! You know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. My idea of the patriarchy is a, a system of male dominance of society. Yeah, but that's not my sense of the patriarchy. So what's, what's yours? Well, in what sense is our society male dominated? Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a very, labor. Very tiny proportion of men, and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like. Where's the dominance here precisely? What you're doing is you're taking a tiny sub... I, I had to pause it. 
Thank you for your service. If you haven't been told that today, thank you for your service. This is home of the free because of the brave. And I will always stand on that. I know Jordan's not even from America. He's from Canada. But I have, just have to say, if you're fighting the good fight, I appreciate you. I love you. I'm praying for you. If you've lost a loved one, my condolences, my respects. It's, I'm able to do what I do because of people like y'all, because of people like your family members who've laid their lives on the line. True bravery. That's men or women, frontline workers, healthcare workers, all of y'all. Thank you. Strata of hyper Bring it successful back, men. Men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like, where's the dominance here precisely? What you're doing is you're taking a tiny substrata of hyper successful men and using that to represent the entire structure of the of Western society. Don't work There's like nothing that. about that that's vaguely appropriate. But I could say equally well that most rape victims are women. You know, terrible things happen to people of both sexes. And you could say that with, with, with perfect utility, but that doesn't provide any evidence for the existence of a male-dominated patriarchy. I would say that anybody with more than a cursory knowledge of 20th century history who dares to claim simultaneously that they have compassion for the downtrodden and that they're Marxists, are revealing either their an ignorance of history that's so astounding that it's actually a form of miracle or a kind of <laughs> or a kind of malevolence that's so reprehensible that it's almost unspeakable mm. because we already ran the equity experiment over the course of the 20th century and we already know what the the Marxist doctrines have done for oppressed people all around the world and the answer to that no. mostly was imprison them, enslave them, work them to death or execute them and as far as I can tell that's not precisely commensurate with any message of compassion. Sorry, tried that, didn't work. We got a hundred million Next. corpses to prove it and that's plenty for me and if it's not enough for you well then you should do some serious thinking either about your historical knowledge or about your moral character. The, the evil the malevolence of, 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 a, of a Marxist society. You're talking about Hitler, Joseph Stalin, uh, Kim Jong-un, talking about all bad, bad people. We, it, it's been seen. It doesn't work. It, it sinks society lower and lower and kills off completely innocent people based on just the, the wanting of power and greed. And it, it's evil. It, it don't work like that. It, it does not work. And that's plenty for me. And if it's not enough you for you, well, then you, you should do some serious thinking either about your historical knowledge or about your moral character. Uh, uh, question right. uh, for Professor Peterson. Um, why do you feel that someone's personal gender identity and pronouns infringes your free speech? Can one not also argue based on your interpretation that professors can use racial slurs in their classroom um, and the, that the inability to do so would violate their freedom of speech? There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and saying that there are things that you have to say. And I regard and these made up it. pronouns, all of them, as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians. Do you understand that? And I don't, I'm not a fan of that sort of person. And the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework. I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems, and I know the literature inside out and backwards. Ooh. And I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. I like, I love how he slowed it down so you can really, those people that don't comprehend, he wants to emphasize like, I do not approve of this message. It's not happening over here. I know all, I'm informed. I, I get it. I'm probably way more informed than you and I'm not speaking that language. There's him, there's her. Simple, boy, girl, you put anything in front of it, you, you can't change the XY chromosomes. Men can't have babies. Women can't do certain things. Come on now. Men, penis, woman, vagina. You can't, you can cut them off, chop them up, insert, whatever, but you can't change what God put into the world. Men, women, that's it. I'm not calling you nothing else. I'm calling you how you came out. Come on now. And that's that. <laughs> I, this whole patriarchy thing, I think you have no idea how pernicious and dangerous it is. Well, no, you I know, don't. Men I and really women don't. Go on. Throughout history have fundamentally cooperated to push back against the absolute catastrophe of existence. Mm. A terrible death rate, the, the probability of chronic starvation, early death, disease, the difficulty of raising children with all the death that was associated with that and to look backwards in time and say well basically what happened was men took the upper hand and persecuted women 
in this tyrannical patriarchy is it's absolutely dreadful misreading of history. It's a terrible thing to teach young women, and it's a horrible thing to inflict upon men. When the Marxists say, well, that wasn't real Marxism, what it really means, and I've thought about this for a long time, it's the most arrogant possible statement anyone could ever make. It means, if I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, that, instead of the genocidal massacres, because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. You don't understand it. You don't understand it. And you're not that good. And if the power was in your hands, assuming you had the competence, which you don't, you wouldn't have done any better, and even if you had, there would have been someone else waiting right behind you to shoot you the first time you actually tried to do anything good. And that's what happened to all the old guard who ran the damn revolution. Stalin rounded them all up and shot them, along with their families and millions of other people. So even if you do happen to be that avatar of moral purity that you claim implicitly, the probability that you'd get to act out your goodness in relationship to those possessed by your ideology is zero. Is being sensitive to offence such a problem though? Like we would have previously called that manners. It's a terrible problem. So imagine, you know, imagine you, st okay, so the rule is you can't offend anyone, all right? Let's say you're speaking to one person, I can't offend you. All right, fair enough. What if I'm speaking to 10 people? Do I get to offend one in 10? How about one in 100? How about one in 1,000? You're going to come out on stage and you're going to say something important about something vital and you're not going to offend one person in a thousand? Well, you can't say anything about anything important ever without offending probably the person you're talking to. Important speech about important issues, especially contentious issues, is instantly offensive. Man, you can't say it any better. Now, you've heard the cliched speech, facts don't care about your feelings. You're going. Freedom of speech means you're going to ruffle some feathers. Freedom of speech means there's going to be sides. So whether you view it as right or wrong or just different, there's going to be different sides of, of the fence on all things. Jordan Peterson, uh, you go watch the, the most radical leftist, whoever it is, there's going to be different sides in the comments section. But to, to take away the ability to speak on your opinion and your belief, to speak on it, 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 you can't do that. You can't take that away. You're not harming anybody directly with your speech. If they if they take offense to it, so what? So what? Like you control you control your emotions, and if you can't control your emotions, then that's your own personal prerogative that you got to face that with the Lord, and you got to pray about it, and you got to do whatever you think you need to do. But I'm allowed to say what I want to say. You're allowed to say what you want to say. Believe what you want to believe. I believe Jesus Jesus Christ is the Savior, the Messiah. Yahweh is who I pray to. I drop to my knees each morning. If, if, if I try to make sure I remember each and every morning to give thanks for all of this, everything. It wouldn't be possible without Jesus taking on the cross for my sins. He could have sent down fire and brimstone, burnt us up like Sodom. Gomorrah, but he didn't. He said, you know what? The world is sinners. They're evil. I I'll take it on. I'm selfless. He had two th two real criminals next to him on the cross, and, and he was the only one that was completely innocent, completely perfect. He said, I got this. Put it on me, Lord. He knew what he was sent for. He knew what he was doing, and, and that's where I put my trust. And Woo, I know that's kind of a side tangent, but that's that's what I'm passionate about and that's what I know is the only way to save this world and the only way to have true peace is to know that you don't have to do it by yourself, but along the way you're going to uh, encounter evil no matter where you go. Satan is always lurking, but you got to speak on it, you got to call it out and people are going to take offense to it. You're going to take offense to what other people say most likely as well, but you got to put that into context and realize that God has the ultimate say, so he works it all together for good. At the end of the day, it's all going to be made right. When revelation hits, the, the true believers, you're, you'll be up there. You'll be good. We got to get to it, man. I, I have to watch those individually, like all, all of those, those speeches and debates because there's so much info and knowledge that I can learn from. I'm not nearly as informed as Jordan Peterson is. I'm not nearly as precise in my points and eloquent in, in relaying my, my knowledge in a, in a peaceful way because once you get to an argumentative state, Arguing is good. In itself, arguing is good. But once somebody gets upset, once you start to quarrel, emotions get involved, it's over. It's no longer no longer an opportunity to convince and no longer opportunity to portray fact and reason. It, it's just, it goes sideways. People get upset, feelings hurt, butt hurt, all of that. It, it never goes well. So you have to learn to debate and argue and discuss like adults. And, it, and it's okay to differ in opinions. Don't take offense to it. Listen, realize that there's, there's other, uh, information systems out there than just your own the world doesn't revolve around you it actually is is, is a better mindset to to serve you know what i'm saying that's the way the world gets better when you serve when you're willing to listen to other sides of the fence and you're willing to grow 
I'm talking to myself as well. That's why I'm reacting to people like Jordan Peterson, people like uh, Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk. I'll listen to people on the left as well. I'll, I want to listen to everybody take in what I, I grew up on the left side, just so you know. I saw what was wrong with the world. I, I got introduced to the good book, the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. So I've, I've formed my, my stance and I know I say, uh, I'll always lean right, lean conservative as long as things stay pointing towards the good book, pointing up. The world is so confused with looking right, looking left. We need to look up and remember who paid the ultimate sacrifice, who allows us to be here, who created all things. Look up. People are going to disagree with that in the comments. That's okay. Let's have a conversation about it. Let's discuss. I love y'all. Let me know what you thought about Jordan uh, Peterson's just most savage reactions or savage comebacks and, and all these debates right here. Let me know where I need to go next, who else I need to check out. Y'all let me know down below. I appreciate you taking time to watch. Subscribe, like, notification bell if you're new. If you want to support the channel, you can always donate on uh, Patreon, buy me a coffee, or PayPal. Music requests, things like that. Y'all know I do music reactions as well. If you didn't, go browse through my videos I've got I've got a ton of different music reactions and things like that but I'm just trying to grow trying to share my opinion on top of, of learning from other people's experiences as well so I love y'all if you're down with that I appreciate you Godspeed I'm gone